Hey everyone, it is late at night and I am Norman. This video is kind of an accidental follow-up video to the one that I did a bit ago where my wife and I went into my favorite city and I was going to confirm that I'm actually on the waitlist for an Oyster Perpetual. Just to see, just to make sure that I'm actually on that list. Because whoever helped me didn't give me a card or anything just kind of went back into the back and said that they put me on the list. That trip was actually a date that I had put on the calendar for my wife and I. So once a month, I'll just pick a date and that will be date night or date day. And the following month, the idea that I had come up with was going into Seattle and spending a day there. I figured we could just wander around the city and I could surprise her. So we began by stopping at Le Piché, which is this great little French restaurant there. We had pastries and mimosas, and I looked up this great furniture store that I recalled being near First Ave. Turns out it's actually closer to the aquarium, but that place has amazing artsy modern furniture. Way out of my price range, but absolutely amazing to look at and fantasize about. Then I figured we could stop by the Fluvog shoe store and I could surprise my wife with a new pair of shoes, whichever pair she wanted, but she didn't want any, probably because she already owns five pairs of them. So I ended up buying myself a pair of mod boots, and while I was in there, I was thinking I've never actually gone watch shopping or looking at watches all the times that I've been to Seattle. So I did some searching on the Maps app, and it turns out that there's a Watch Finder & Co. in Seattle at the Nordstrom's at the mall that was just a few blocks away. So we made our way over to the mall there. We went to Nordstrom's, and we were standing right on the spot where the maps were showing that it was, and we didn't see anything. So we went up all three flights of the store, and each time we were standing right on top of the Watchfinder and Co., and yet we look around and we're surrounded by ladies' clothes or baby stuff or pillows and blankets. So I asked a worker there, and he wasn't even aware that it was there. Then it dawned on me, I'll bet it's just a display case. So we went all the way back down to the first floor, and sure enough, it's just a little display case amongst their other watch display cases. So I went over there, there was about 10 watches in there. And apparently that is the emptiest that display has ever been. I don't recall exactly what pieces they had. Pretty run-of-the-mill, nothing terribly exotic or exciting. There was a Submariner in there. So you could go into the Nordstrom's and walk out with a Rolex for $28,000 or so. But right across the street was a Rolex AD. So I decided to go over there and just kind of see what they had in their cases, look at what other watches they were selling there. So my wife and I went over to the Rolex section and it was the usual sparse three or four watches, display only. But there was a worker there. She was filing through paperwork, and I proceeded to tell her my story of going in to confirm that I was on a list and not realizing that I had to remember the actual person that I worked with. And she was like, oh yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm working on right now, is going through my different wait lists. And she was super cool. I chatted with her for 10 or 15 minutes, she was telling me about all of her various spreadsheets that she keeps, and apparently she actually calls a lot of the people that are on the list. She has a spreadsheet for pieces that have shorter wait times. She has the gold pieces on its own spreadsheet, because apparently those are completely different animals. And she has the spreadsheet that she never wants to look at. The huge, gigantic one. I assume that this has the Daytonas and Submariners on it, but she said that she hates having to look at that spreadsheet because it's sad. 
all those people on that list that are just going to be waiting years because it's absolutely massive. I ended up getting her business card, and I figure maybe at some point in the future, if I decide that I want to try the OP again, I think I'm going to go with her this time because she was super cool. Absolutely night and day from my experience that I had the previous time when I was just trying to see if I was on a list. But we ended our trip by wandering through the rest of that AD, looking at all the PRXs everywhere because PRXs are just all over the place. And then we had some dinner on the water, some fish and chips, and it was just a great day. And it was really cool to see just how different this AD employee was compared to the one that I had worked with before. And maybe it helps that right now Seattle is really hurting financially. In fact, after that trip, we found out that the Lululemon was actually pulling out of that mall. And it was all over the news because Seattle's businesses are just in a lot of pain. And that doesn't help that a big brand like that is pulling out as well. But maybe that kind of environment is more conducive for getting on wait lists. At the other city, it's full of people with lots of money. I imagine that their wait lists are just massive and the demand that they have is probably quite a bit greater than over in Seattle, so I don't know. But it was a fun trip. It was fun looking at some watches and hanging out with my wife, wandering around and eating some good food. Thanks for watching.